What's going on guys, another video, let's get to it. You can see the chart on the right. And uh, that's just a little friendly reminder that, uh, you know, there's th 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 there's work to be done. <laughs> so the books will, for this stuff right here, if you're interested in seeing it, will be in the description box down below and in the pinned comments. I'm gonna see if my description box is fucking up because I don't think you can actually link from there on my channel for some reason, but other channels can. So I'm gonna uh, take, take a look at that and see if I can get that fixed for you guys. But anyway, without further ado, let's get to this video. So the day that we have been anxiously awaiting for has finally arrived. We're meeting up. So one thing about these guys that I've noticed so far is they obviously have multiple coaches, which I did not really know. I thought it was just like two people, uh, Natalie and Adrian or some shit like that. So I didn't realize they have like, like several different coaches. Uh, but cool, anyway. With our ex for the first time after a period of no contact. Our brain is on fire with the what ifs. Can this be? How do I attract all these internal dialogues that dominate us? Obviously, we immediately focus on the need to let them know how sorry we are, how much we've missed them, or worse yet, expecting that they are prepared to apologize for the things they did leading to our breakup. After all, it's important to remind them how very heartbroken we are. Please stop right now. The ultimate goal of this meetup is to secure another meetup. And in order to do so, think lightheartedness, flirtatiousness, and flaunting your personal transformation. Positive interactions only, right? So what most guys do wrong in this situation is if they actually do get a chance to meet up with their exes, right? What they do wrong is they start pouring out their feelings. Oh my God, I've missed you so much. Oh God, it's been so hard without you which is not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to, again, think about, you're not, and, and it's this is very difficult to do, but you're not thinking about it from your ex's perspective. If they broke up with you, they lost attraction to you, which means there are certain things about you that you're doing that are not ideal or were not ideal, right? Negative, uh, negative behavior, negative interactions over time usually breeds to a breakup. Now, there are other things that can influence a breakup, but at the end of the day, that person decided not to be with you because they think it's a better idea to not be with you. And there are th certain reasons that influence that. So let's go. Cool. That's the only thing you should be concentrating on. Hi, I'm Coach Abby. Thank you so much for joining me today on Love Advice TV. Love Advice TV is a channel created exclusively for you to help you navigate through the challenges, which often accompany a breakup. So prepare to meet your ex with the same mentality as if you were going on a job interview. That can be difficult, right? I'm not saying I disagree, but yeah, it's it's more, it, again, it's it's about perspective and framing it correctly. If you go, again, if you go in there confessing your feelings and and, and, and just dumping emotions onto them, they're going to be like, bro. Again, think, yeah, again, think about it as if you've never met them. That's probably, you know, a better um, way to think about it for, for, for me. For me, you guys might have automatically known exactly what she fucking, where, where she was going, but as if you've never met them, which is difficult because you're going to be emotional about them. But think about how you act when you first meet anybody. You're not dumping emotions onto them. You're asking them, Hey, how are you? Uh, you know, what have you been up to? What are you interested in? You know, I know you know what their interests are, but you know what I mean? You guys, you have to understand and, and think about it from that angle. When you go to a job interview, what you want is to impress for success. The goal is to be offered the position, right? You know, it's about leading the interviewer to visualize you as part of the existing team. It starts right at the beginning of your interview. Now let's transfer this mentality when meeting our ex. Admit it, we are all visual creatures. That's the first thing then that we should focus on. For the purpose of this video, I have broken down to five things we should concentrate on when looking to make a positive lasting impression. First, dress up. So yes, that's a good thing. I just wanted to add real quick before I forget. The reason why this is here on the right is because of the emotion that you want to try to um, portray when you're when you are in this situation here. So, uh, so for example, if you're meeting up with a person, right, and you're full of fear, grief, apathy, guilt, shame, and all that shit, you're going to be coming out of out of pocket. This is why you do need to put in some work before you meet up with your ex. You actually need to be putting in work all the fucking time. Actually, I don't know why people stop. Right? It's so common for people to stop putting in work as they progress through through life. They go to school with this mentality of learning and they stop. They stop for some reason. So 
over here in the power section, look at what the, the, the emotions are like at ease, creative consciousness, sorry, conscious, um, cooperative, productive, happy, influence, compassionate, trust, fearless, synchronicity, and in service right here. This is when you trust in God or the universe or whatever higher power you believe in. If you don't believe in any of that, that's fine. Just understand that you are trusting that no matter what, what will happen, you'll be okay. So adding, putting this chart into that perspective in this particular video, if you're going to meet somebody for the first time after you guys have broken up, how do you think you should come at, come out at them, right? Meet them. Well, if you're like, oh man, it's, it's everything sucks, <laughs> right? And you're just, just whiny. They're going to be like, bro, like fuck off, <laughs> right? So I, I'm, I'm just telling you what it is. I'm telling you how it is because that person is, has now probably been out with their friends a lot, possibly dating other people. And now you're like, Oh, like if they're with somebody else, you know, you have that whole thing to think about if they uh, have been partying a lot. Again, remember positive, you want to reinforce more positivity into their life, right? Two perfume. Three, be mindful of how you speak Four. Limit discussing anything that had to do with the breakup. Any reference to the past should be of a pleasant memory. And five, keep drinks to two at most. Now, <laughs> that last point is a good one. Actually, they're all good, but especially that last point, keep drinks to two. I have had so many fucking students message me because, again, my coaching program is a uh, on, a, on, a, on a kind of like a there's two ways you can do it. You can um, do like a month or two after, and it's just a little upfront fee. Uh, and then you can pay another fee for more time. And basically everybody who fucks up, they get drunk. Not everybody, a lot of them, let's say, right. They end up drinking and then they're like, oh, <laughs> and they start saying stupid shit to their exes. Guys, they need to think it's a good idea to get back together with you. They need to be like, oh, you know what? Getting back together. He's been, he's so much better. See, when you first see them for the first time, they're going to look at you. You're going to be hopefully dressed well. Like, look at all the points, right? Uh, dress, dress, smell, dress well, smell good. Uh, uh, limit the talk. So keep positive talk uh, at, at the forefront and limited to drinks, right? They're going to be assessing your energy. They're going to be looking at you and they're going to, be, and they're going to subconsciously go, is he down here or she down here? Right. Or is, or are they up here? Is this a good idea to go back to them? Or is it a bad idea? Over the, over the course of a breakup, a lot of this happens on an individual basis. So the guy, for example, sometimes, uh, cause I coach mostly men, they get complacent as fuck in a relationship. They stop focusing on the mission and purpose and they start making the woman their, uh, their purpose and look at that that exact face that she's making right there is exactly the face that she makes when you guys act like that this can happen to women too women can get complacent as fuck they can gain all kinds of weight now baby weight's one thing i ain't got a problem with that you know as long as she's gonna make some sort of effort to to focus on herself right but um a lot of people gain weight they stop taking care of themselves etc and uh, there are certain standards that women definitely have for us and you, it's okay, fellas, to put those same standards on a woman, even though they will tell you that it's a bad idea, which is bullshit, okay? So, um, guys, you you're, you want to be up here in the power section, okay? Attracting. See, a lot of guys will try to force a girl to think about them in some sort of doing dread game and fucking negging and shit like that. Pick up stuff during a breakup thinking that it's going to work. Okay. It doesn't work that way. They need to be somewhat emotionally still attracted to you to, to have some sort of effect. Right. And when they want to disconnect their emotion, see, they lost, they fell in love with you, right? Sorry. They lost attraction to you. So they're going to fall in love with you. One follows the other. I learned that from Chris Camwell. He put that in a perfect fucking, uh, visual display. So if attraction falls, cause they've, you know, maybe you got complacent or insecure or both. Um, which happens a lot, which is why I bring it up. It's very common. If that happens, love will follow. Okay. So they fall out of love with you. They're lo they're, they're not attracted to you. So they, you, you'll hear a lot of shit. Like I need to find myself. I'm not in love with you anymore, but I do love you. You'll hear that same shit all the time. So it's really important that you guys understand that you want to be as an individual up here, working on yourself constantly. You want to be, you know, see, 
being mission focused will add an air of mystery to your to your relationship because you're not going to be available all the fucking time. And guys, today I've so oh my god, so many of them have zero purpose. Right? And that's why I do what I do because I want to get guys to start focusing on their purpose. Okay? A lot of this stuff, the power section will fall into place when you have a purpose in your life. Let's look at what each look like. When I say dress up, be neat. Convey you made an effort, not only for them, yet demonstrate you take pride in yourself. Be fashionable, a noticeable change in style. Use a color that is flattering. Number two. Red, black, you know, as, okay, depending on your skin color too, right? A good thing to do, there's a couple of really good YouTube channels uh, about fashion. I'll try to find them for you. Um, they have fantastic tips on like what to wear um, all the time. So a good thing to do post breakup is work on your, uh, on your fashion uh, sense, okay? Uh, I like Henley shirts, for example. That's like my thing. I'm not wearing one now, but I like Henley shirts, right? That's like what I, that's my go-to, okay? And the reason why is because I have good genetics for shoulders and chest and Henley shirts really accentuate that no matter what your gut <laughs> looks like, right? So guys, what works for you? Figure it out. Spend a little bit of money, spend a little bit of time. Uh, you know, if you have like a sister or maybe the, maybe your sister has some friends that are girls that you're not interested in, you know, being friends with, bring them out and get them to, you know, especially if they're hot, you know, give them, let them give you some advice because girls love to dress up guys. They do. So you can have them, you want to have an idea of what you want, what will work for you, right? And when you're going through a breakup, it's a lot easier to lose weight because you're not going to be, you know, you're stressed, you're not eating as much. And then you can get actually on a pretty good diet schedule, especially if you're slamming the gym like I fucking want you guys to be doing. So then you can use that to your advantage and you can quickly double uh, how good you look because you can start dressing better and you're going to start looking better because you're going to be lighter. Okay. A lot of guys will say to me like 70 to 80% guys, when they go through a, a breakup, right? They'll say, Kyle, I've lost X amount of pounds. I'm hitting the gym again. I'm doing this again. I'm like, why did you stop? Right? So, um, anyway, let's go. Two, I, I talked about perfume. The power of scent to trigger emotions cannot be undermined. Fragrance not only is seductive, it triggers a detailed memory. The purpose is for them to sense the familiarity you shared. It's so important. Three, be mindful of your words. There is so much power in our words. Keep them from being accusatory, defensive, over-informative, bringing us to number four, limiting discussion about anything that had to do with a breakup. This is a moment of looking forward and not through the rearview mirror. Avoid discussing all the reasons it didn't work out, maintaining a lighthearted attitude throughout the meeting. And if it does come up, right, put a positive spin on it. You know, oh, I learned so much. I've been working on myself a lot because it, 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 it happens sometimes. There's sometimes it's unavoidable. Okay. I don't want you guys to bring it up. Sometimes she will bring it up and she'll be like, so like, are you seeing anybody? And then like from there, it can be like, yeah or no. And then from there, it'll be like, yeah, um, you know, I haven't been really been seeing anyone since we broke up and then it will kind of roll from there. So from that perspective, again, you just have to be cool and put a positive spin on it. Number five, and so important, keep drinks at most to two. Right. Why is this so extremely important? You're fueled with emotions. And, you know, you have a couple of drinks, you think it will take the edge off, when in reality, it may trigger sensitive issues escalating to an uncomfortable dialogue. I've been there as a coach for students that have done that. And it frustrates me, of course, but being frustrated with them doesn't change anything. But, but afterwards, when they're sobered up, I'm like, hey, what the fuck are you doing, bro? A lot of people use alcohol as an excuse to have, make some dumbass decisions too. So make sure that's not you guys. Don't risk starting an evening with bubbly fine wines only to risk ending it and blurting out hurtful repressed feelings. Mm -hmm. This is very, very important. I invite you to book a session with me. Let's create a dress rehearsal of sorts. So guys, be careful, okay? Um, it, it, the, the, the original video will be in the description box so you guys can check it out. But be careful. Be careful, be careful, work on yourself, work on your purpose, work on your mission, focus, and take a look at this section here, this chart. You can find this in the Sedona method and in the letting go by David Hawkins book. Okay. So when you understand this, okay, uh, you know, you have to, you're going to be kind of all over the place. You'll be less up here than normal, but you're, you're probably just, just in between these three colors, orange, green, and uh, blue. So 
you're going to be bouncing between here, but going through a breakup, you're going to be more down here. You're going to be focused here. And as you get better, as time goes by, you're going to actually start rising up naturally. Well, if you understand and focus on where you're at and you're like, okay, I want to be in this neutrality place, you're going to have a place to aim for. So what mean, what that means is if you're aiming, right, you're taking aim and you realize there are other things distracting you from where you want to be, you're going to realize what those emotions are simply just by focusing on where you want to go. It's kind of like going from A to B. If you're going from a destination, sometimes there's obstacles, right? So say there's anger in the way. Okay, cool. You have to understand how to process that anger, which is in that book. It's in both of the books. And then you can use the releasing method, the releasing techniques uh, in that book, uh, which will help you. Um, Of course, you know, working out on its own, which I think you should be doing daily, um, going through a breakup, that anger will actually start to subside eventually. And you're going to start climbing up to, to, to neutrality. Neutrality is the place where, you know, you take it or leave it, you know, acceptance, acceptance is a big one, guys. Actually, I, I, I've kind of overlooked acceptance in the last couple of videos, but acceptance is crazy powerful. I accept what is. Okay. This is where, you know, whatever hits you, you're like, whatever, cool cool right you're just you're cool you're productive you don't care you're just like whatever cool stop caring okay now getting here again will take time it will take focus but a lot of people don't even understand this at all and they just wander through life feeling whatever whatever hits them so a be working out b be working on your fashion uh be be, uh you know learning about this material, right? So make sure you pick up the material in the books and description box and uh, pin comment section down below. If you need to help, let me know. It's in the description box as well. Done.